20 seconds, not holding at the T-minus 40-minute mark per the SpaceX feed, 15 seconds. we go for launch in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, flame deflector activated, 4, 3, 2, 1, engine ignition and movement. We have liftoff of Starship Flight 6. And the rocket has cleared the tower. A great ascent of the rocket so far, now coming up on a minute into flight. Starship approaching max Q, the point of peak aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Some great tracking shots by the teams at La Padre in spaceflight now. for max q we're coming up on a few different events in fairly rapid succession we'll see for the super heavy booster miko which in this case is most engines cut off then the hot staging for the stage separation then the super heavy boost back burn will start at about t plus two minutes and 44 seconds Good flight so far, all 33 Raptors on the booster. Continuing a good burn so far. Less than 30 seconds to Miko. SpaceX monitoring to see if they are gonna go forward with a catch today. Approaching Miko. And you see Miko there. Hot staging. SpaceX confirms that the tower is go for catch. Ignition on the ship upper stage. And some good on camera or on uh, ship views. Or this is the super heavy booster, one of those hypersonic grid fins there. Now nearly four minutes into flight, boost back burn shutdown has occurred. Booster has been Sounds like there may be an offshore diversion, which means we are, sounds like not going to see SpaceX go for the super heavy booster catch.
So the super heavy booster will be landing in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. They are not going to be attempting a tower catch today. As SpaceX said in the run-up to this mission, this was always a possibility that if all of the commit criteria were not in alignment on both the super heavy booster as well as the tower, that they would not go for a catch, and that is what we have here today. continuing to track the super heavy booster as it makes its descent that little white dot at the base of the box on the right hand side of your screen that is the hot stage ring that was jettisoned now t plus five minutes 41 seconds into the count the landing burn should be starting in less than a minute on the super heavy booster SpaceX will, of course, continue to get good flight data from the Super Heavy booster, even though it is not in a position for them to make a catch attempt today. This tracking view from the perspective of South Padre Island, and this from due west of the launch pad. So we're coming up on the landing burn start. Now landing burn underway. And a splash down in the Gulf of Mexico of the super heavy booster B-13. And the booster has exploded on the water. So for those joining once again, SpaceX waved off a catch attempt of the super heavy booster instead opting to have a water splashdown instead. So you can see the ship upper stage still continuing on with its flight, though. Now T plus 7 minutes, 41 seconds in real time, 729 on the SpaceX feed. So we are continuing to track the entry of the Starship upper stage. There are some now aerial assets over the super heavy booster remnants out in the Gulf of Mexico. We're pushing in pretty far with our camera here, so it's not super crisp, but you can see those two white dots that are above the horizon line appear to be a couple of helicopters that are in the area over what's left of the super heavy booster. Want to listen to a quick update from SpaceX's Dan Hewitt. As it was last flight, where we had a team of ship techs do just an otherworldly task, replacing the entire heat shield, thousands of tiles, installing a backup ablative, and that pretty much set us up to do a, a pinpoint landing on Flight 5. We did not do that with this one. We have some backup in those really sensitive areas around the flap, uh, but this is an older generation heat shield. And knowing we weren't going to do that, we even went and removed some extra tiles. There are some missing tiles on the nose cone where we're testing some backups. There are some steel covered tiles in a couple of different spots. Uh, and there's also a whole lot more steel of the ship showing. Um, as you guys talked about, we gave it a little bit of a haircut, a uh, couple hundred tiles uh, trimmed off the sides. And that's where we might have catch fittings in the future. But Ooh, color color's starting to come in, so it looks like uh, things are going to start heating up, Kate and Jesse. Yeah, fun fact, Dan, we actually removed 2,100 heat shield tiles from Starship in order to uh, basically present that necessary receding line, which you kind of can see there in your view. Uh, think back to previous flights, 
the, the heat shield line came up further on the vehicle. And just like Dan said, we want to test the vehicle beyond what we think it is capable of carrying based on our simulations and calculations. Um, so once again, to just be super plain, don't be surprised if we see some wackadoodle stuff happen here. Um, <laughs> We won't be. Uh, there are a number of things that we are testing out intentionally to see what the ship can take. Yeah, exactly. And knowing what those limits are will, will really help us design the vehicle of the future. Um, essentially, removing those tiles helps us remove a lot of weight from the vehicle, a lot of things that might potentially need refurbishment in the future. Um, and the goal is to come up with a heat shield pattern or design that we don't have to refurbish. We can just continue to use it over and over again. And that's why we're changing some of those tiles and uh, moving stuff around, mo removing a lot of those tiles, um, as Kate has been mentioning. And some good words from the SpaceX commentators there, just listening in on the latest with this mission now, 51 minutes, 35 seconds and counting into this flight. We're anticipating the flip maneuver to come up at about T plus one hour, four minutes, 56 seconds. Then the landing burn said to begin about five seconds thereafter. So once we hit the one hour mark, things will start moving very quickly. One of the additional benefits of seeing this come down in the daylight and getting a nice view of that forward flap where it was Still glowing red. Should see some good actuating of the the flaps here today with this. Now a little more than an hour into flight. As we are still watching the ship as it prepares for its final re-entry. Also keeping an eye on the remnants of the super heavy booster bobbing out in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Still a good bit of it above the water here, which perhaps may not be surprising to some, but is certainly interesting to note. And it looks like we're less than a minute away from the landing flip here, so Given the visibility that we've got right now, it should be quite spectacular. Hopefully we'll get a view from the water as well. Now four kilometers and descending. Call from SpaceX that Starship is still on a good trajectory as that begins to descend through the clouds here. great views as we were expecting getting to level out in the belly flop standing by for the landing flip and there's the landing or the flip and a great view of the Indian Ocean below. Wow. And look at that. The first daylight splashdown of a ship upper stage down in the Indian Ocean. And here's the buoy view. It looks like it may not have exploded this time. Well... Stand by. Oh, never mind. <laughs> wow. Looks like it uh, cracked in half, possibly. It certainly appears to have split pretty squarely in the middle there, although it's... That's a shame that they pulled away from it. Oh, there they go.
Hopefully we get a, a shot back of the ship, but as we keep our eyes on that, we do have these live pictures of the Super Heavy Booster. And you just can see some type of ship that's making its way out towards the Super Heavy, presumably part of the SpaceX fleet. They have uh, asked folks to stay away from this area of the Gulf of Mexico, so presumably any ship that would be appro approaching would be approved as part of the launch and landing plan. 